this is the um, final part of the high poly tutorials. This one is not necessary if you work in a studio world unless you're concepting. It would be very rare to be asked to do this. But all it is, is just showing a method to, um, to pose the character and, and compose the character in a piece of work uh, to make it look visually you know, great to view uh, without having to worry about the topology or anything like that or having to bake it or texture it. The downside to it, of course, you don't have that nice fidelity of the texture in. Uh, but it's a good visual aid anyway at this stage and I'm using it as well for basically a visual aid, aid at this stage anyway so and here what I've done is I've gone to transpose mass which I'll use a, a lot in this process uh, and began shaping as you can see I've only done a little bit of work with the transpose mas master before moving it back over the reason being if you do too much sometimes it'll crash um when you're trying to move it back to to normal so it's uh I, since i'm working in levels i can always stack it up and say okay i've, I've made something else stack it up made something else stack it up and if it becomes an issue later on where you've got some kind of error that you're not happy with that you hadn't, no, hadn't noticed generally you can turn off a couple of layers morph target and turn it back on again and work there's ways around it with working in the layers, you can set the layers on the transpose master, use layers, so, you, so it'll, it'll make a layer for that pose. Which works quite well, really. I guess it's used mainly for blend shapes, but it is handy for something like this as well. I could have made an armature for this as well. Um, I could have even rigged it. But it's just a very quick method to produce it. Um, an armature... The movements would have been wouldn't have been as precise as I can get it with masking and just tweaking it on the fly. For the low poly in the end, I will be making um, certainly I will be making um, a rig for it as well, and possibly putting it. On, I think I'm gonna put it in Unreal just for an experiment, really. As you can see, I can just clean up these areas, make it look quite nice. And once I've moved a few items, uh, again, retranspose. So I've got it as a separate layer, so I'm, I'm not doing too much each time. It's a little bit of slow work, especially if you haven't got much RAM at the moment at the time, which mine seems to really slow down with the transpose. So what I've wound up doing here is just pausing every time I've got to transpose. So it was taking a good 10 minutes. So I was taking a little bit. Of, that was a bit of an issue. I'm actually uncertain exactly why it took so long to be honest with the transpose. Most of the time it's fine. I'm assuming it's some kind of RAM issue or something. When you've overused it too many times, it has to think too much and it's just a bit stuck I think I was very inspired by uh, Jay Hill's uh, work with his cyberpunk character with a kind of look, obviously a different pose but that kind of punky look to it, very cool. I like that wildness, I'm just trying to portray a little bit of my Jinx character, the same kind of feel to it, with the tongue stuck out.
the um, Faude missile. It was, um, it's an internal, it's basically a joke for myself really over something I have to take for my mental health issue. I mean, it, it's got the same kind of name to it, which I find just somewhat, quite funny. So, um, I've, um, so I, I referred to it in that, but then later on I thought, nah, it's just silly. so silly and don't even bother, you know, um, you're not Dali, <laughs> you're a 3D artist, you know, for God's sake, you know, um, so yeah, so later on I just called it Jinx. Uncertain about this pose where it should be bound on top of the rocket. It looks good. It'd be nice as a statue to print, but the downside is you're not. The main focus isn't just the character. Um, that's the downside to it. Maybe the rocket should be then. Should be just that sat, stood next to the other rocket. But it works quite nicely. So, but it did make me question whether the pose was correct once I'd finished it. But it just was too far away. But I'll do some close up renders anyway of various sections, which will help the art station anyway for the portfolio later. I'm just looking there. The, la the angle and the line of, of the pose, the balance. Um, Play around with this quite a lot, trying to get the balance right. As you can see, yeah, that, that looks, yeah. Um, so it looks like it can hold the rocket and have it a sensible, and have that one leg up as well. It needs to have some kind of weight to it, basically, which on the pose it was before, it wasn't really having that weight so much. Yeah, it's beginning to look like it's weighted quite well. Looking all the way around the pose. Got this pose um, mainly on a TikTok video. A, a lady doing this kind of pose, and I thought that's wild. I've got a screenshot of that, and a, a very wild pose. I quite loved it. And for a lady with a bazooka and everything, like that, I thought, yeah, that's, that's appropriate. It just looked quite cool. I have another idea for the main pose for the. The final character, but for now, yeah, this is so suited. As you can see, I've got a little bit of an issue there with the with the turn of the wrist. But um, when it gets to low poly, we shouldn't really see that because the density of the low poly should be enough to be able to rotate the wrist without much hassle. We shouldn't really see the same problem. But you certainly can see it there. It needs to be corrected. So, so we do correct it a little bit. And have that flesh coming out a little bit more and the fat as, as, the, as the fist turns and the lower arm.
for the rest of the videos I, I have a plan of um, showing the retopology, showing the texture and showing you the baking but um, at some point I want to put it on real and, and make it as well and uh, I haven't done making in quite a few years properly uh, and I've never, I don't think I've, yeah I have done it in my head but not, not a lot um, I'm putting it on real as well to, to make a new scene and everything normally it's already created just to drop it in or let the biggest deal with it and you just test it in it to test the materials so um, for the whole scene I'm not going to record it because I don't feel like I'm it's, I'm adequate enough to teach in that, in that, in that really so um, I'd rather experiment with it and find my, my place in it and few shoot down the path you know a few um, months down the path I'm happy with Unreal more I will um, show other people what I've learned, but at the moment, even though I've worked in the industry for about you know, three or four projects in Unreal, it's mainly just dragging and drop, you know, dro dropping in the, the assets to the scene, testing them in the scene. If you're happy with it, like them well, so you can test it, and then uh, send it off to the Vegas. So um, they actually put it in the scene themselves. I've never really done a full character, you know, and rigged it. And animated it on Unreal, so it's going to be a little bit of an experiment, ever so slightly. So I'd rather only show these kind of things when I'm sure I know what I'm doing, so I don't show any missteps. Yeah, I've opted at that point to to retranspose it to class it as another layer because it, I, I've done a lot of work in that one. Admittedly, there is some things I've missed out on this. Um, I think I, I have made a few mistakes because I, I was unwell at the time. Um, but the main things really is um, there's a plaster on her and her knee. And a left knee that needs to be put in there, which I'll do before the low poly is made. Um, and also, I could do with uh, put, punching some holes in the the left shoulder belts belts really for where it uh, where it's got the belt buckle. But as I said in the video, I mean, yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not 100% right now because of COVID, but certainly you know, I've, I've been a lead artist before and on big projects and a lead character artist. You, you certainly see people panicking because they've made a mistake or, or they get some feedback that that was a mistake. And uh, some of the work they've done is a mistake. They get some feedback on it and, and they don't know what to reply. They feel quite guilty. They make excuses. And in the end, people do make mistakes. It's just one of those things. I, I don't feel bad about it. You know, it's okay. You make them. Um, everybody's human. That's the truth of it. So, best bet is just get that game out with with uh, hardly any mistakes as possible. Um, if it works with no mistakes, or you don't notice the mistakes, you've done you've, you've done it. You've done well. But um, yeah, um, sadly, everybody makes mistakes in life. You are human, and the human brain is fallible. Sadly, so. Um, it does um, upset me when people are so concerned when they get some feedback back or something uh, that they've, they've made these terrible mistakes and how are they going to keep their job out? I'm not interested in finding them, I just want them to fix it. That's the bottom line. Uh, 
as I say, but we just we, everybody in Dust are human beings. You do make them. You do make mistakes. I guess the main thing is to show how you can fix them when you notice them. Yeah, how you can fix them when you notice them is the main main aspect, really. Now here with the hair, I'm actually going to redo the hair when I get to low poly. Um, but, um, I'm going to make it straight so it's a lot easier to deal with than rig, basically. But for this, it's, it looks quite fantastic. I've, I've decided just kind of bending around that kind of point. Uh, and you can imagine the air flowing in that direction, so that's how, put, that's how I'm trying to put the hair. How, you know how our body's kind of flowing. You can imagine the hair just flowing back outwards at, you know, at that kind of angle. So that's what I'm trying to create there. That, a nice flow to the shape. I've always loved sculpture and, and statue models where they've got a lovely flow to them. But you can see the dynamic shape of them. Definitely, it, it, I think it, it really matters to make that character feel alive. They seem static and just fixed, even though the, the static pose, it just looks so false. It, it just looks so much more beautiful when, when they've got some kind of flow to them. Which is what, I, I'm just finishing off here really with the, with the hair strands, making it look like, yeah, we're moving in this direction, we've done a quick spin around where the hair's caught our hair a little bit. So there's a lot of angle checks right now to make sure that hair works quite well. Testing the braids a little bit. But I think it's a very important piece to the final piece of work. It, it needs to have that kind of spin to it. For a while I kept the original hair there just in case I wasn't happy with this, but I think it works very well, so I had to delete, delete the original hair from this one. Here we could have transposed for that little bit there, but because it's still taking so long to transpose, we decided to do it by hand a little bit. Getting the pivot point in the same place and, and pivot like I'm doing there. There you go. I think I just noticed some final errors I want to fix. Just so things get a little bit more fly. You can see the hair is clipping a little bit into the hand, uh, which we'll look at. And also, I hope man gets some dynamics on the bullet necklace. Feeling of movement, basically, is, is all important. I feel for this kind of thing. Now I haven't. I think we're at about forty million polys or some plus. I can't. I can't see in this screen, but something along those lines. I think you should be able to see it in your, in your YouTube. Um, I haven't shown the decimation of it. That I just. It took. 
an hour or two and it's just pointless to see me just clicking on buttons and nothing happening except decimating but i got it to about about um seven million in the end and i uh, wanted to try it on seven million for what i, want, what, what I wanted to render it in um yeah just testing some lights here but it wasn't adequate i had an idea of putting it in key shot but then i had the idea and put it in marvelous uh, i mean so mama said which is what i'm doing here i did it before with the joker and, and it was fairly successful um it's seven million polygons just remember that and it's still flowing quite well there's not much lag there it just shows how much mom can handle even for high poly models it's um it's a good piece it really is it works really well obviously i'm, I'm i haven't got that um i ha I'm, I'm putting materials like on the on the missile and the bazooka but you, you don't have that texture there well, obviously you just have materials and flat block colors maybe i could have done a little bit more painting but it, it wasn't really necessary because I'm going to text you it later. So it, it's just a, it's just a little bit of fun for this piece. This is part of the process, really. So here, all I'm doing is just going through each one, putting, setting up the vertex color on the albedo, setting up the roughness and metal values, um, setting SSS on the on the skin shader, things like that. It's looking fairly, you know, it. it it becomes a fairly nice piece, I feel, in the end. I also duplicated the eyes as well and uh, added a little bit of a bump to the iris. Um, therefore, I can have a glossy, a gloss as well as a, a pupil, as well as an under eye, as you can see there. You don't see it right. You, you don't see what it looks like too much there, but you certainly see it when you're have the ray tracing, ray tracing set on later. Again, flow poly, this is totally overkill. There's no need at all to bother with this. Absolutely. Unless you've got a boss that just loves seeing things posed so you can visualize it. There's just really no need whatsoever. But, um, yeah, uh, uh, why not for this stage in the process have something to see? For me anyway. As you can see, there's some kind of clipping there going on between the, the leg and the boot. We we'll fix that later. All it takes is just to go back into Zebush, remove, you know, move the points around, um, and then basically just re export it again. That uh, as long as you haven't changed the materials, which I don't think you would have been able to do in um, in Zebush, Mama said, remember, anyway, you don't have to do much difference, really. It'll just update, because it'll take a while to update 7 million polys, but it'll, it'll just update. Uh, I, I move it out and then realise, oh it's inverted, <laughs> so I just put it inverted and sort it out, put it back together again. Happy hasn't adjusted the materials and we're good to go. It's that quick, well, I had to pause it obviously. The update was a little bit long but it was fine. Now what I've done here is I've added a bit of bloom and, and lens flare as well to give it on the camera. I like dropping lights into the actual sky for my ambience for just for visual appeal and creating. Normally it's not what I do when I finish off, but I, I was quite happy with it with this one, so I decided to. I mean, normally I drop some more uh, omni lights in there, some, not, some more um, spotlights in there and direction lights, but get some rim lights going on, but 
For this, I think it was well suited. I think it produced what exactly what I was after. Just drop, dropping the lights into the skybox instead. Here I'm just dragging it and just making the uh, render passes, which is a new feature of Set 4. I, I was lucky enough to be in the beta team for this, so um, gave me hands of experience before it even came out of, of what we were expecting. So now we got on to texture, which suppose we can also texture in, which I, I want to try at some point. I'm just not sure how advanced it is right now, so I need to delve into it. Alright, this is the final composition, and we've got it all rendered. It didn't take that long to render, really. I also did a turntable as well, which I'll show you at the end. Or I'll just put in Art Station, whichever comes up. No, I'll put it, I think I'll put it in the video as well, so it's on YouTube. But, um,. Yeah, this is just showing the composition. To be quite frank with you, I'm not that experienced in composition. I don't do it very often uh, using Photoshop. Um, I'm not. I don't enjoy for my own style, my own visual style. I don't enjoy those grungy backgrounds that you get when you make a monster character. I think it's just so um, atypical. I, I, it, I just don't like it because it's so often seen, really. Um, so I try to avoid things like that, really. So for this one. I had an idea of what I wanted for the composition, so I was creating it basically like, like that. I, I'd found a concept that I like the background too, so I was producing something similar. <laughs> Just reminding me, there's a there's an artist. Um, one studio I worked at junior, and um, if she ever met, watches, she'll know who she is. And I won't mention any names, obviously, but. She was telling me what, what layers she liked to use, what layer style she liked to use for Photoshop. Uh, I mean, at that stage, I've been modeling for about, for a long time, I won't say how long she probably been found my studio, but um, I've been working in the industry quite a while for that, and um, it, was, it was quite amusing that you had somebody trying to tell you what layer styles to use when you've got them all memorized, which one each one does anyway, just natural for you. Um, <laughs> but, um, no, not to be big headed, but it, it was just quite an amusing moment for me, really. It's like, oh, well, thank you for that. That's appreciated, but. Oh, dear. <laughs> Never mind. Okay. Yeah. But again, either way, for um, actual composition, I don't I don't generally like to do because I, I try to do mainly real time objects. And I, I like, even if it's not real time, like the, the last Arnold one I did, uh, I, I, I certainly. <sighs> How to put it? I um, I enjoy the the idea of even when it's still life having having something that's three D. I don't I don't really like putting two D on top of it like grunge maps and things, photo bashing. I've done it before in a few things, but I, I don't really enjoy it that much. It's not really my style. Um, and those vignetted uh, grungy backgrounds. I've done some vignetting here, but those grungy backgrounds they kind of. I see them so often, they just, I, I find them really uh, off-putting. Of course they are standard, but because they're standard, I don't like doing them really. I have to be a little bit different. And what I've done here is put a little frame on it. And the reason I put it like that is so I can crop it at the end, but I want it as a square. So this helps me visualise what I'm going to be seeing in the end, without having to um, cut it out already. Because if I cut it out already, I can't really. It's going to be more difficult to use my, any more layers than I've been there. Here's the final tweaks in it. Where I just wanted to change the contrast a little bit to make it work a bit better. I think we're good to go. That's it. Thank you, thank you so much.